Hi, welcome to Abraz Around the House. Today I'm going to go over an install that I recently did uh, in addition to the garage and it is uh, right behind the dust collection system here. It is a sub panel for 220. I need 220 in the garage to be able to do a lot of different things and uh, first and foremost was uh, to be able to supply electricity to a table saw that I purchased about eight months ago and it's a, a 220 Grizzly table saw and so we added the the panel for that um, behind this wall here is a laundry room on the other side of that is our kitchen and when we purchased this house uh, we had decided to go with a gas stove I had the 220 sitting there so I'm like let's uh, make good use of this 220 so I ran conduit on out here and and put in the sub panel let me preface this video by saying I am not an electrician this is for entertainment purposes only and to give you ideas just to as I get ideas from other people uh, this may give you an idea to to steal the power from your kitchen if you're not using it and uh, use it in your garage because hey uh, better than having to run all the way back to that panel so behind me I'm going to remove this uh, stuff so you can see behind here and then we'll get started I did have to cut my my door here down uh, it used to go all the way to the edge but um, the dust collection system came out a little further than I anticipated uh, didn't look bad so I just uh, it, it's it's pretty well flush there I just cut that that door off so I could get to it so have a little storage right here I have some plans for this storage um, and we'll cover that in a later video so to kind of give you an idea um, of the direction I'm headed with this is that uh, this will probably be more open like this I'm going to take these out um, and this will become a spot for a tool in the woodworking shop but um, I haven't made up my mind completely on all the things I'm going to do but that's a general idea as you can see the dust collection uh, is tucked away in here and whenever I want the shop cleared out and uh, want to do something else in there whether it be during the holidays or whatever this will be the place that the dust collection system gets parked uh, while I'm working on a project in here I will most likely just pull this dust collection system out use it let it stay out and then whenever I want to clean when I go to clean up and I know that I'm not going to be working on a project for a little bit I'll tuck it back away in here As you can see, there's not a whole lot of room to spare. All right, let's go ahead and grab a camera. And you can see, here's uh, the 220 panel. All right, so we're going to go ahead and dive right in and show you what it took to create this panel here in the garage. Well, the first thing that you have to do is get your supplies. So I ran to my local Home Depot and grabbed uh, the supplies I needed. This is the area that I'm coming from with the 220. Uh, go, it'll come through the laundry area here and then um, into the garage but this is where the stove is located and so that will be my starting point well you can never be too safe so first thing we're going to do is check for power and of course uh, it is lit up and so I'm going downstairs flip off that breaker for the range 
and then come back and start uh, taking this thing apart. And of course, uh, checking it one more time never can be too safe with electricity. Have a healthy respect for it. So this is where I'll put that junction box and just uh, flooring spot was just right for it so I went ahead and attached it there and uh, I'm going to use these uh, screw connectors to start the conduit. Go ahead and uh, cut the uh, spot for the conduit to come through but about burned through that wood so I had to change the blade out and then I uh, went and finished it out, uh, put a screw in there so I could just pull it out. So now that I've got that cut, I cut the same on the other side so I can uh, put the conduit through the back of the, cab the cabinet. I did it on both sides there. So This will also keep things even and level as the conduit goes through and is connected there. Now I'm working here behind the refrigerator, which is uh, the next step before I get to the laundry room. And so I just measure up and cut a hole there in the drywall, uh, similar to um, the height that was done through the cabinet, so I can run that conduit on through. Okay, now I'm in the laundry room, and so I'll do the same thing as I did on the other side of the wall, cut that hole, and fun part about this area was how tight it was. It was uh, a little bit of a squeeze kind of getting in there and working, but I was able to pull it off. Then I went on into the uh, garage, and behind that toolbox is where the 220 is going to come in to the garage, and I ran the conduit all the way through and connected it with those connectors. After I ran the wiring on through into the garage, I am now working on the conduit and the 90 here is going to be my first turn. Uh, put the connector on it and then cut the pipe, my conduit pipe, to length. And I had a couple obstacles that I had to go through for that. And went ahead and uh, worked through those things to be able to get to the place where I want to finish up uh, the 220 sub-panel. I had to make one more 90 degree turn uh, to go up and then I put in a junction box at that point and on this wiring I will say it's very specific that you use uh, wiring for the amperage that you're going to be running through there and the, the voltage and so I have uh, 8 gauge wire going through to allow for that 40 amp breaker And next I'll be putting in that sub panel and I chose the 125 with eight spots in it. Uh, didn't need uh, a lot of spots and that's why I chose this particular one. Go ahead and uh, wire nut the wires together using the proper size for that. They have coordinating wire nuts for particular sizes. Here I'm just uh, putting in the the hots, uh, the red and black being the hots and the the white is the common and then the uh, ground wire 
will uh, be connected to the grounding portion of the box. All right, so moving on to the knockout. I'm gonna come out of here uh, with um, 12 gauge wire for a 110 outlet or 120 outlet. And so that'll be the first connection that I have to the sub panel right off the box. And that will increase my amperage. I think I end up going with a 20 amp breaker for this. Uh, that'll give me a little bit higher breaker for some of the tools, but uh, still a 120 box. Another obstacle to get through here so I just chiseled that out to be able to put in the, the conduit that's going to run on down to my 220 outlet. Now this junction box is for the 220 outlet but I'm going to just go uh, use it uh, that the other junction box is a pass through. So what you're seeing here is me just passing through that box uh, for the, the 220 outlet. And I go ahead and attach the wires to the breaker itself. Pop those in. I will reiterate here that I am not an electrician and anything that I do here is for entertainment value only. I'm sure I won't do everything according to what a master electrician will do. Next I'll add the, the 110 or 120 receptacle and then the 220 receptacle after that. Okay, well here we go. I'm gonna test this thing out. The sub panel in the garage, 40 amp, 220. All right. So I guess we'll test the 120 first. I don't really have anything to check the 220 yet. Oh, it works. This is the 120 here. Let's go this one. Yeah. I don't have anything to test that one yet. We'll check it with the 
tester. So we got two lights on. Two lights on here is correct wiring. Good. that just about does it a little bit of touch-up paint later and this is the final look Hey, thanks for viewing this episode of Abraz Around the House. Subscribe and like, help out this channel, and I'm looking forward to taking you on this journey of creating a woodworking shop out of this garage. God bless. Have a great day.